G'day everyone, just a quick message before I start this vlog. So it is a long vlog, I've got 10 questions I'm answering, all the questions you guys sent in on Instagram, I'm going to answer 10 of them. I've left below the question and the start time in the vlog that it starts. So if you want to hear the answers to 1, 4 and 6, you can just listen to those. If you want to listen to 1 through 10, let's get started. So I got my laptop here. So if you see me looking over here, I'm not just, I don't just like something here. The questions are on the laptop. So the first question I got asked was, what level of ability do you need to be to play over in the US? Now, it's a good question. There's quite a lot of colleges. I think there's over a thousand colleges in America. So there's plenty of different levels you can play at. Uh, there's division one, two, and three, which is the main NCAA college division and that is segmented one, two, and three by ability. So division one is generally the best all the way down to division three, which is still a good level, but it's not as good as two or two or one. Anyway, the, the level of ability you need to be is dependent on your country. I would say outside of professional leagues, because you can't play professional to be able to qualify for uh, NCAA athletics, college athletics, but you need to be at one of the top levels to be at Division One. I, I play in the MPL, which is the, which is like the state division in Australia. There's one in each state, and that's the top level besides the A League, and that's how I got over here. A lot of my mates were over here. There's a guy I know at USF, a guy who played in Tulsa, a guy who played at Belmont. All Division One schools, all of them are uh, played in the MPL league. If you're not in one of those MPL leagues, don't fret can still definitely get into schools, just probably not Division One. Uh, Division Two or Three still have great schools and great areas, but the ability is just not that top, top level, which is, which, is, which is okay. The second question I got asked was, what do you have to do to get your scholarship? Great question. Scholarship is made up of, a, it's almost like a package, and half of that package is your athletic ability, and half of that package is your grades. And what a school does is they put both of those together, put it into a bundle, and then from that bundle, they, I guess, value you, and they value you based on an offering scholarship dependent on what you get. Division one schools have a 9.9 .9 athletic scholarship. Division two, I'm pretty sure it's 4.4. .4. And what that means is 1.0 is a full scholarship of athletic. And all divisions have unlimited uh, academic, but, just depends, you have to be, you have to qualify for those based on your grades. And division, but division three doesn't offer athletic at all, just so you know going forward. The next question I got was what soccer background was, what's your soccer background and how did that lead to the US and why the US? So I played in the NPL my whole life uh, in New South Wales, pretty much. I actually had a little venture over to Poland for about two months. Otherwise, yeah, it's been all in Australia. I've always loved playing. I've always wanted to test myself and see what I could do with my soccer. Uh, and I, so I tried, I tried to go to Europe, as I said, uh, Poland initially, and then we tried to get a British passport, but I failed. So all that was really left was South America, North America, or Australia. And I just figured America, you can, I can get a degree at the same time. The level here in the MLS is probably 10 to 15 years ahead of the A-League the Australian top league. Uh, so I just thought, why not come over here and see what I could do? The next question is, uh, what position are you? And are some positions harder to get spots than others? It's a really good question. Yes, some positions are definitely harder, but it depends on the coach and the system that they play. For example, I'm a striker. I've come to SIUE, we've predominantly played 4-3-3 three, three the whole time I've been here. So there's only been one spot for a striker. But you could go to another school and they could play 4-4-2. Four, four, it honestly just depends on the coach and the system. And that's something when you go through that recruiting process, you got to ask the coach before you commit to a school. Because you could go to a school where they have seven senior center defensive mids and you're a center defensive mid, you're not going to see the pitch. So that's very important to pay attention to. The next question I got asked were about grades. They said, what grades do you need and what tests do you need to take? So the test you need to take is one's called an SAT and one's called an ACT. And they're two standardized American tests, which you need to take 
in order to get to schools. They, they, you have to take them, one or the other, and don't usually have to take both. But anyway, so there's those, and then what grades you need, pretty fluid. Uh, your grades could be anything. What grades you have just depends on, as I said, that scholarship package, how much of the athletic academic scholarship side you might be given. So if your grades suck, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it just might mean that if you really wanna come over here, you might have to pay a bit more if you don't get enough athletic. So question six is, was it hard to adjust to living on your own and in a new country? And the answer is yes, definitely. I've never lived outside of home before this in my life. So it was a really new experience. I had to do a lot of growing up, but the best part about it is if you're coming over here for a sport, you're gonna have a team and they all help you. So that's really important, I think, going forward. Uh, if you did it and you weren't in a team, it would probably be a lot harder, but they guide you through the steps of what you need to do, what you need to get, uh, and they're really good role models, especially that first year, just to help you get a move and get used to it all. And plus, usually the first year you're in dorms, you room with someone, so it doesn't feel like you're completely on your own. In saying that though, uh, you know, you gotta get used to, you know, shopping for yourself, cleaning after yourself, and can't have mom's cooking anymore, all that. So it's definitely is an adjustment period, but you don't need to worry about it or stress about it. You, you, you'll be able to de deal with it, trust me. Following on from that question, my next question was how do you stay connected to home? And I know for a lot of internationals, this is really important. I think uh, homesickness is a big part about living away from home and by yourself. Uh, I have four brothers, mom and dad and a dog back home, and I have all my mates back home. So it's definitely pretty hard, especially first of first couple of times I came to get used to not being with them all the time. Uh, but but you know you have FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, text. If you got an iPhone, iMessage is free internationally. All this good stuff to be able to stay connected. And I know it's time based on time zones. It might be you have to figure out when exactly you can talk with people back home. For example, in Australia. It's great, most people wake up about 4 p.m. my time. So I have the whole night if I wanna to talk to people. And it is an adjustment period, not being able to text your mate and go over and see him and do whatever, but you will get used to it. And I think staying busy is really important to help with that homesickness side of things. And also stay connected to home as much as you can. You know, Maybe set a schedule of a weekly day you FaceTime your mates. So weekly time when you text your mom and your dad to let them know you're alive so it's really important the eighth question which i'll i'll have a vlog on later so i'll just quickly summarize it all typical day as a student athlete so for my typical day wake up around seven train around eight that goes to about 11. i go from there back home to eat and then i'm straight to classes classes are 12 to 12 30 to usually about four five that I'm home and if I'm not studying or vlogging, uh, I've got a bit of downtime, I'm gonna hang with mates, go do something around St. Louis, which is the city I'm near. Oh yeah, just go get food, go eat out, do something. So it's frantic, <clears throat> excuse me, it's frantic. It is, college is frantic. You feel like sometimes you can't breathe, but uh, it is something which you honestly get used to and accustomed to and it's, it's a lot of fun. The, my ninth and second last question is what sort of stuff should I be aware of when heading to college in the US? And this is a really good question. I think there's five things you should be aware of. I think that's the weather, money, the duration of time you're here, your fitness levels, and how frantic it is. As I said before, super frantic college. You just gotta make sure that you don't come over here and you're unorganized because it goes from zero to 100 real quick and it doesn't slow down. So I'm not saying that to scare you at all. Uh, it's well manageable. Just make sure you're organized. Make sure you have food and stuff ready before you start a big week. Make sure you have, if you wanna go shopping, make sure you get here a couple of days early so you can do all that stuff before it starts. Fitness wise, I think that's important, really sports specific. Everyone over here wants to play. Everyone over here wants to win. So when you go to a school, don't rock up on fit. Don't rock up not ready, because if you do, you're gonna be behind the eight ball from the start, and it's only gonna affect you. I think that's a really important thing to pay attention to. Speak with whoever you need to be as ready as you can, so day one, you're at the top of your level. 
The final three are weather, duration, and money. First, weather and duration. You know, weather changes a lot here, so make sure you pack for it, knowing your climate of the place you're coming to. The duration of time you're here is important. If you're here for six months, know that you're gonna pack for six months and stock up for six months. Uh, if you're here for a year, similar thing. Um, and money-wise, it's quite hard to work here on an F1 visa. So if you are do go home a lot over the breaks, maybe that's the time when you work a lot, try and get some money in the bank outside of your scholarship. Um, otherwise, yeah, just make sure you you prepared for all that before you come. The final question I got was, do you like nacho fries from Taco Bell? Well, you're gonna find out. You know who you are who sent this question because in my vlogs, from now on out, I'm gonna do at least in one vlog a week, I'm gonna go and try an American college, American food place, not college, somewhere in a, an American food establishment. And I will be having nacho fries at Taco Bell soon and you will see my reaction. So you gotta stay tuned for that. That's the 10 questions. I hope you learned more about me. If there's more you wanted to know, check out my Instagram, check out my Snapchat, my Facebook. It's all in the link below or just leave a comment below on this, on this vlog. Have a good one, guys. You left the world today.